Okay, this video is to help with the 3.1.2 compound interest homework. Um, we've got our two formulas right here. Um, they kind of give us a key over here, but I am going to say that when they talk about A, the amount, that's the end amount. Uh, the principal, they say, is the initial investment or the starting amount. Um, let me remind you with the rate, be sure you change that into a decimal. Um, when we're working with T, that's going to be our number of years, our time in years. And then N is the number of compounds or the number of times per year. So number of times per year, if we're talking about like quarterly, would be four, um, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's start with number one. Number one tells me that $500 is invested in an account which offers 0.75% compounded monthly. Um, I'm going to start with part A. Let's just go ahead and kind of label the parts here. So this is going to be part A, part B, and part C of each of these problems. Um, on part B, I'm only going to work with the five years. We don't really need to do the 10 and the 30. If you can do five, um, that would be enough for me. All right, so on number one, on part A, what they're asking us to do is to find the amount A at T, which is really asking us just to plug in the numbers that we have to the formula. So let's see what all we have here first. I'm starting with a principal amount or a starting amount of $500. Um, it tells me to work with a rate which is 0.75%. That's a really small percent. Let's go ahead and change that into a decimal. So to change a percent into a decimal, I'm going to move my decimal point two places to the left. Um, it tells me that it compounds monthly. So N is going to be 12 times per year. All right, so part A is just asking me to fill into the formula. So A at T is going to be equal to P times 1 plus my rate, 0 0.0075, divided by N, which we just found to be 12 to the 12T power. So I'm going to take that principal amount, my rate, and N, and fill it all into my formula. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little math on this inside part right here as well. So that's going to be 500 times, and in my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and use a calculator on this part. So in my calculator, I'm going to do my 0 .0075 divided by 12. Be really careful with these calculators on this stuff. They're not real super great um, when it comes to order of operations. So I'm going to go ahead and divide that first, and then I'm going to add my 1 to it. That's going to give me 1.000625 to the 12t power. And the more of those decimal points that we can use um, or keep along the way, the closer our answer is going to be. All right, so on part B, it asked me to determine how much the investment is worth after five years. That gives me a t equals five. It wants me to find the ending amount, so I'm going to find a at five. That'll give me 500 times 1.000625 to the 12 times 5 power. And again, I'm going to be really careful putting all of that into my calculator. Um, I'm going to start with my order of operations of raising this to the fifth power. Let me see if I can get that where you can see my calculator a little better. So that's going to be 1.000625. I'm going to raise that to the power of 12 times 5. 12 times 5 I know is 60. And then I'm going to multiply by the principal amount of $500. Um, we're talking about money here, so I'm going to round off to two decimal places. So that's going to give me $519. And I'm going to go ahead and round that up to 10 cents. All right. Um, if we were going to do the 10 and the 30, I'd do exactly the same thing, except I'd plug in a 10 right here, or I would plug in a 30 right there. So either way. Um, again, I think if you can plug in that T value, um, then you can do it with 5, 10, or 30. All right, on C, we get into kind of the trickier part. With C, we're trying to determine how long it will take for the initial investment to double. When we're talking about something doubling, what we want to do is take the principal amount and multiply by 2, and that will give us our ending amount of A. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going to do here. So I'm going to take my principal amount of 500. I'm going to multiply that by 2, and I'm going to say that that is going to be $1,000. So we're trying to find out how long it will take us to turn our $500 into $1,000, or how long will it take us to double um, this amount. That's really what we're looking for here. Okay, so I'm going to start 
with my formula. So 1000 A T is equal to my 500 with my 1.000625. And this time I'm trying to find out how long, let's go ahead and write that down, then I'm trying to find T. All right. Okay, I know these are multiplied together, so the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 500. Because we have doubled, that should always give you a 2 over there on this side. I'm going to leave just a little bit of space right there. You'll see why in just a second. 6, 2, 5, and I'm going to raise that to the 12t power. All right, um, at this point I'm in an exponential situation, and an easy way to take care of that is to change into a log situation. Um, but in calculus, you're going to use a natural log a lot to help you solve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. And when I do that, what's going to happen is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And the natural log is a button on your calculator. It's right down here. Um, so I'm going to use that natural log button right there to kind of help me out on this. And what happens when I take the natural log is I can use my trick with expanding that we talked about in 3.0.2. And that can bring that 12t down to the front. So let me go ahead and write that out. I'm going to say I've got the natural log of 2 on this side. And I can bring that exponent down. And now I've got something that's a little bit easier to work with here because everything is just being multiplied over here instead of having an exponent that I'm trying to deal with. All right, so since it's being multiplied, I can divide. I'm trying to get t by itself, so I'm going to divide by t and my natural log, which again, I'm going to keep all of those decimal places for as long as I can because that will make my answer a little bit more exact. I have a lot of room over there now. Something kind of like that. And so my 12s will cancel out, my natural log, and all of those numbers will cancel out, and that will leave me just with t. All right, so let me talk a little bit about how to put that into the calculator. When I go to put this into the calculator, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm going to use the alpha f1 number 1 feature on my calculator. And if your calculator is up to date, what that will do is that will give me a fraction bar that I can use in my calculator. So I'm going to start with alpha. Alpha is this green button right here for me. It's right below second, so alpha. And then I'm going to push the F1 button, which is right here. It's your Y equals button, so alpha F1. And then I'm going to choose number 1. And again, what that will do is that will give me a numerator and a denominator to work with. And it kind of changed into a funny color on my paper here. I'm going to put this in right here. So I'm going to start with my natural log. Natural log is right here next to the 4. So I'm going to push natural log. And it automatically opens up parentheses for me. So I'm going to put in my 2 and close the parentheses. And on the bottom, I'm going to put in, sorry, to move to the bottom, I used my down arrow key. So down arrow, I'm going to put in my 12. And again, natural log. And it opens up the parentheses for me. So point one, two, three. 6, 2, 5, and I'm going to close those parentheses, and that gives me a number right there. Now, in this one, we're talking about an amount of time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write that down with three decimal places, just because that's what we're a little more accustomed to using. But then if you read in the problem, it does say to round your answer to the nearest year. So I'm going to say that that is going to happen in 92 years. So this time that we're talking about here is always calculated in years when we work on these um, compound interest problems. All right, the difference on number two is that this time it tells me that we are compounding continuously. Compounding continuously automatically throws me over into where I'm going to use this formula right here. So if you see something compounding like monthly or daily, we're going to use the formula we used up there on number one. But anytime you see compounding continuously, that's where we're going to use the formula with E in it. All right, so I have all of the same numbers here. So my same A, um, P rate, all of that still applies. So I'm going to be finding A when I have my P value, my principal value of $500 E, and then my rate is going to be the .0075. Don't forget to change that rate into a decimal, which we already did up there on number one. And so that right there is my formula that we're going to be using for all of number two. All right, part B. 
I'm going to say I want to know um, determine how much it's amount how much it is worth when t is equal to five years. So I'm just going to plug in that value of five. Um, e is a button on the calculator, so that's going to give me 0 0.0075 times 5 up there in my exponent. Alright, so back into my calculator. This one's a little bit easier um, to input. E is going to be the second function right there above natural log, and mine's a little fuzzy, but here's natural log right here. I'm going to push second and that natural log button and it's going to give me an E. So let me go ahead and do that first. I'm going to push second and my natural log button or E and then I'm going to put some parentheses around and I'm going to do 0 0.0075 my rate times my amount of time which is 5 and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to multiply it by the 500. So times 500 is going to give me also 500 and oops Yep, too excited about the 19 there. So $519, and this time I'm going to have 11 cents. So I actually earned more, a little bit more, when it was compounding continuously. Oops. All right, and then for part C, again, it wants to know how much I have or how long it's going to take for my amount to double. Again, that makes my A or my ending amount be 1,000 because I'm starting with 500. And if I double 500, that's going to give me 1,000. So looking at my formula right here, I'm going to have 1,000, which is equal to 500 E to the 0 0.0075 times T power. All right, same process. I'm going to start by dividing over by my 500. Because I doubled, that should always give me a 2 over here. So that's going to give me E. Let me leave a little bit of space right there. So E to the 0 0.0075 T power. All right, I'm going to use the same process I used up above. I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. Something nice is going to happen with that this time. That's going to bring all of this to the front. So that's going to give me the natural log of 2 on this side and 0 0.0075t times the natural log of E on that side. Now what's nice about this one is that the natural log is really a log with a base of E. So my natural log and my E are going to cancel each other out. So a natural log and an E always cancel each other out. And now to get T by itself, I just need to divide by 0 0.0075. So T was just almost already all by itself. And so a couple of ways you can put this in. Um, if you would still like to use the alpha F1 number 1 function, that will work for you. Or in this case, you could just divide because it's kind of easier numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and do alpha F1 number 1 just to get some practice with that. I'm going to put in my natural log of 2 and close my parentheses. And then I'm going to divide by 0 0.0075. And there's my answer right there of 92.420. And again, it asked me to round to the closest number of years. So I'm going to round that down to 92 years. So on that one, because our interest rate was so very small, we ended up with really similar answers, whether we were compounding monthly or compounding continuously. Okay, same process on number three, it's just that our numbers are changing, so number three. Um, let's go up there on the top and say that our principal amount this time is 1,000. I'm going to use that same amount for three and four. We are working with a rate of 1.25%, which is going to be 0 0.0125 when I change it into a decimal. And on number three, we are compounding quarterly, so my number of times per year will be four. Okay, since we are compounding quarterly, I'm going to use that A is equal to my principal amount. You can use the A at T if you want to. And then I'm going to have one plus my rate in decimal form, 0 0.0125, divided by N, which is four, to the N times t power. So I've got my 4 times t up there in my power. And again, I'm going to go ahead and make that just a little bit neater. 
Um, since I'm going to be using it, I'm going to keep my 1,000 right there. I'm going to use my calculator and let that do my 0 0.0125 divided by 4. And then I'm going to add 1 to that. So really what's inside my parentheses here is 1.003125. And again, the more of those decimal points you keep, um, the more exact your answer will be at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and keep all of those. All right, so that was part A. Part A gives me that formula right there that I'm going to use for parts B and C. All right, on B again, I want to find out how much I have after five years. This one's a little bigger percentage rate, so I should have a little bit more money, so that's kind of nice. So 1,000, 1.003125, and I'm going to raise that to the four times five power, so to the 20th power up there. So I took my T value and I plugged in right there. And make sure you're getting kind of reasonable answers for this. If we start with $1,000, we're going to end up with something kind of around $1,000. Um, if you invest $1,000 and you end up with like $400 or $5, something's probably going wrong or um, you don't have a very good bank. Um, on the other hand, if you invest $1,000 and you end up with like $2 million, um, then again, something's probably going wrong and we really want to find a bank that's giving that kind of percentage rate. That'd be amazing if we could. So again, just kind of watch the reasonableness of your answers here. Okay, so I'm going to start by raising what's inside my parentheses to my exponent. Make sure you use your order of operations. So exponents are going to go first. That's going to give me 1.003125. I'm going to raise that to the 4 times 5 power, so the 20th power. And then I'm going to multiply that times my $1,000. And there we are right there with $1,064. And again, that's kind of a kind of a reasonable amount um, there to have. Oops. $1,064.39. So we'll go ahead and round money off um, to two decimal places. All right, let's go with the more complicated version. This time we want to know how long it's going to take us to double. If I have $1,000 and I want to double it, that's going to give me an ending amount of $2,000. So I'm going to take my $2,000, set it equal to 1,000 times 1.003125 to the 4t power. So a little more complicated this time, needing to use that logarithm to be able to get that exponent out of my exponent area up there. All right, I'm going to start. These are multiplied together, so I'm going to start by dividing over. Again, that should always give you a 2 right there, and it's a 2 because we are doubling. Let's leave a little bit of space and all of that to the 4t power. And again, if you want to change into a logarithm at that point, you can. I'm going to use the natural log because that's what you're going to use more in calculus. Either way, the logarithm or a natural log gives you the capability of moving that 4t to the front. So that's going to give me the natural log of 2, which is equal to 4 times t times the natural log of 1.003125. And again, I'm making a big deal about those being um, multiplied because now I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide by the 4 and the natural log. So I'm going to say that t is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by, I'm going to divide over my 4, and I'm going to divide over my natural log. Now you can make that 4 back into an exponent, but I'm just going to put this in my calculator. So I'm going to just put all of that into my calculator. All right, so I'm going to start with alpha F1 number 1. That's going to give me that pretty fraction in my calculator again. So again, alpha, the green button, F1, Y equals, and number 1. And I'm going to put in my natural log of 2. Close your parentheses. Use the down arrow to get to your denominator. And I'm going to put in my 1.003125. And there we are right there. And again, it says to round to the nearest year, so I'm going to say that's 55.538. I'm going to go ahead and round that up to 56 years. Okay, on number four, we're going to use that same information, my same principal amount, my same rate 
just this time we're going to be compounding continuously, which sends me over to my a pert formula. So I'm going to have that a is equal to p, e to the 0 0.0125 times t power. So on part a, that's all they're asking us to do is just fill in the formula. All right, on part B, we're trying to find out how much money we have after five years. So A is equal to P. Oops, I already know P. So that's my $1,000. E to the R, 0 0.0125 times T times 5 power. All right, again, I put all of that into my calculator. I am going to put it in. A little bit separately. This one we might be okay putting in all together, but I'm going to start with second E. Remember that E is on your natural log button. Um, I'm going to put in some parentheses just so it knows up there in the top I'm multiplying all of this together. I think we'd be okay without it, but just in case, that's going to be 0 0.0125 times 5 up there in my exponent, and then I'm going to multiply that times my $1,000. And so after five years, this investment has made $1,064.50. So again, I made a little bit more compounding continuously than we did up above on number three with the same numbers but compounding uh, quarterly. So just a thought there. All right, and with C, I want to double my amount. That means that A is now going to be $2,000. So I'm going to have $2,000, which is equal to my principal of $1,000, e to the r, 0, 1, 2, 5, times t power. And we want to know how long it's going to take to double. All right, same process. Divide by that 1,000 first. That's going to give us a 2 right there. I know it's going to be a 2 because... Um, I'm working with doubling on this one. Okay, again, lots of different ways to solve this one. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. I like using the natural log because that's what you'll use in calculus. I'm going to use my expand tool of bringing that to the front. That's going to give me the natural log of 2, which is equal to 0 0.0125t times the natural log of e. All right, always good to use natural log when you're working with E because natural log and E will cancel each other out because the natural log is a log with a base of E. And then all I have to do is divide by 0 0.0125. And so T is going to be equal to, I'm going to go in my calculator, I'm going to use alpha F1 number 1 again. If you want to just divide on this one, you can. That's going to be the natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.0125. And again, it tells me to round to a certain number of years. And so I'm going to say that my years here, um, I'm going to say 55 on this one. I'm going to round down since it's a 0.4. I'm going to round down to 55 years. Okay, two more that are like this. Number five. All right, number five gives me a principal amount of $5,000. Um, I'm going to invest at a rate of 2.125%. And so when I change that to a decimal, I'm going to move my decimal two places to the left. And that will give me that, 0.02125. Um, and this one I'm going to compound daily, so my n value is going to be 365, so that's going to be pretty close to compounding continuously. All right, filling in my formula, A is equal to P, 5,000, times 1 plus my 0 0.02125, divided by N, 365 to the 365 times t power. All right, let's make that inside piece just a little bit neater. So in my calculator, I'm going to do the 0 0.02125 
divided by 365, and I'm going to add 1 to that, and that'll give me what's there inside my parentheses. Again, just making my life a little bit easier by already having that number. And again, the more decimal points we can keep, the better off we're going to be. So let's see here, that's four zeros, two, three, four, um, five, eight, two, one, nine, to the 365 times t power. <coughs> All right, for part B, I want to know how much I have after five years. So that's going to be 5,000 times 1.12345829 1 to the 365 times 5 power. All right, so putting all that in my calculator, I don't know 365 times 5 off the top of my head. Let me go ahead and find that in my calculator. And then I'm going to put in my 1.12340 um, 5A29, right? yes, 5A29 raised to the 1825 power gives me that. And then I'm going to multiply that times 5,000 and find out that I'm working with, again, money, so let's round to two decimal places. So that's going to give me $5,561.20. The more we invest, the more we're going to make over those five years. All right, and we're going to double. This time when I double my 5,000, that's going to give me 10,000. So 10,000 is equal to 5,000 times 1.00005829 to the 365. This time we're looking for T. I'm trying to find out how long it would take me to double. All right, divide by the 5,000. Again, that'll give me a 2 over there since we're doubling. I'll do my 1.0000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 2, 9, to the 365 times t power. And I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. When I do that, my expand rules tell me that I can take that and move it to the front. So that's going to give me the natural log of 2, 365t, natural log of 1.12345829, just like that. And these are being multiplied together. So I'm going to divide over, and I'm just going to put that directly into my calculator. All right, so in my calculator again, I'm going to use that alpha F1 number one trick. So alpha F1 number one, alpha Y equals. And on the top, I'm going to have my natural log of two. And on the bottom, I'm going to divide by 365, and I'm going to divide by the natural log of 1.12345829. Again, the more of those decimal points you can keep the better off you're going to be. And it tells me to round off to a whole number of years, so that's going to be after 33 years. It'll tell you where to round. A lot of times we round to three decimal places. If it doesn't tell you, round to three decimal places. But if it does, go with the rule that they're saying. All right, and number six is telling me exactly the same numbers, except for this time we're, time we're compounding continuously. Compounding continuously makes me use a pert. So that's going to be that a is equal to my principal amount, 5,000 e to the rate r, 0, 2, 1, 2, 5 times t power. So there's my formula that I'll use for a, b, and c on this one. All right, on b, I want to know how much I've made after five years. Or you could go and try the 10 and the 30 on this one if you wanted something a little different. Times 5. All right, let me go ahead and find out what that is up there with my E. So I'm going to do second and my natural log button to get E. So second natural log gives you E. And then I'm going to put in, let's put some parentheses around that, 0 0.02125 times 5 up there in my exponent. 
don't always need the parentheses, but just in case. And then I'm going to multiply that times $5,000. And that's going to give me $5,560.50. And fifty cents. And this time we actually made more compounding daily than we did compounding continuously. That's interesting. Okay. okay, and then on the last step, I want to find out how long it's going to take me to double, just like the others. So again, doubling five thousand would give me ten thousand dollars. 5,000 e to the point zero two one two five times t power. All right, divide over by that 5,000. Again, it's going to always give me 2. I know it's going to give me 2 because we're doubling. And then I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So natural log and natural log. That's going to bring my exponent to the front using my expand rule right there. So that's going to give me the natural log of 2, which is equal to 0 0.02125 t times the natural log of e. And just like on 2 and 4, the natural log and the e will cancel each other out, which is really nice. And I just need to divide by the 0 0.02125. All right, you can just put it in as division if you want to. I'm going to use alpha F1 number 1, and that's going to be the natural log of 2 divided by a point 0, 0.02125. And again, it tells me to round off to the nearest year. So I'm going to round up on that and say that that is 33 years. Okay, the last one on this assignment is number eight. So on number eight, it asked me how much money needs to be invested this time. So this time we're looking for our principal amounts, a little bit different on this one. And we want to obtain $2,000, so that's going to be my ending amount, and three years, so t equals three. Um, if the interest rate in the savings account is 0.25%, that's not a very big percentage. So let's, see here. let's go ahead and make that 0 0.0025 to be able to use it as a decimal. And then we want to compound continuously. So again, compound continuously tells me that I'm going to use my APERT formula. So it's to round to the nearest cent. All right, so we're not often looking for the principal amount, but here we go. We're going to plug in our 2,000. I'm looking for P. I'm going to put a little multiply in there to make a point here in just a minute. e to the 0 0.0025 times t, which is 3 up there. All right, and then I'm making the point here because I'm multiplying. I can really just divide over by all of this. So I didn't even have to use a log or a natural log on this one. I'm going to take my 2,000. And I'm going to divide by e to the 0 0.0025 times 3 power. All right, so again, in my calculator, I'm going to use alpha F1 number 1 so that I have a nice, neat fraction to work with. I'm going to put in my 2,000 up there on the top. I'm going to do second and natural log to get my e. I'm going to put some parentheses around my exponent up here. You probably don't have to, but just to be safe, and make sure that it's doing all of my order of operations. Check all my numbers there. I think I look all right. And there it is right there. And again, we're working with money on this one because we want to know how much should we invest. So my principal amount, I need to invest $1,985.06. I'll go ahead and round that up to a six and use six cents on that one.